<laughs> Christian Mingle all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Call Mike Tom 101. I'm, only, I'm actually really into farmers only because I'm like really into agriculture. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. You got to find yourself a 4 H partner, you know? <laughs> Someone who knows their way around a pig. That's really important, <laughs> you know? Okay. What's so, a ham hock? I don't know. Russ, there has been a question that I have been asked over and over and over again. And I've been waiting to get on the mic with you to, to talk about it. Sure. Well, Did now you... that I'm finally back from Disneyland, I think we can talk about this. This may very well be the most important podcast you watch this week. Setting us up, mic dropping it. Whoa. Okay. So, Tom, did you know that five-tenths of one percent of all of our subscribers have actually asked this question? I do know. And I actually have two of them to talk about right now. That's cool. Because on our Facebook page, which I never plug, because who's on Facebook anymore? You can follow us at Comic Tom 101 and at Mill Geek Comics. Yep. To follow Russ's you store. Me. You can find him as well. We had a follower there. His name is George N. He asked... When will we see a variant fatigue episode? George, we're going to do it right now. Right the hell now. And you know what? The reason why we're going to do it right now is because yesterday there was another post. I don't even know if it was yesterday. It was in the last couple of days. Within yeah. the last couple of days. Sure. Barnacle Boy said, am I the only one who hates variants? And I responded very quickly to Barnacle Boy when I noticed this comment, and it was... Um, I don't necessarily like variants, and Tom and I had already even talked about doing this podcast this evening anyway. So this is very much content that people are looking for. This is very right. much something that people are asking about. And yeah, we really do want to tackle this. We wanted to take the opportunity, and I think this might be the first of many. We will probably be doing quite a few that will have something to do with variants and variant fatigue. But we're going to make this one short and concise and probably expand upon some of these ideas as we get a little bit farther and uh, get some more comments from the viewers. So. Right. And I want to throw this out there to the viewers right now. What do you think about variants? Just get that in the comment section right away so that we can get these next videos planned out. Absolutely. Because we have a lot to say. If we have a consensus of what people would like to hear and what people would like to see, because I've got my opinions, Tom's got his opinions, but we'd really like to know what type of information you'd like to get about variants. A lot of people don't really understand how variants work. A lot of people just kind of assume that any variant can just be bought by any shop. And oh, and they're all worth money. It, that's another thing that's, you know, a, a misconception about all of this. I mean, you mind if I just jump right in? Well, as first, as... I want to um, I want to ask the audience to make sure to like and sub to the video. That's important. And we are closely, we went up a ton of subs this mm -hmm. week. Like, we've gone up hundreds of subs right. in a very short amount of time. So I want to just say thank you again to our audience. And welcome to all the new subs. Thank you so much. And we're going to keep delivering content. Our schedule is Monday through Friday. And I want to kick this off with a quick little breakdown. Because I know there's a difference between the two juggernauts, sure. Marvel and DC, and how they manage their variants. Can you explain to the audience? Sure, absolutely. So, um... Marvel and DC do variants different ways. And then the indies kind of do them a different way as well. Um, DC generally does something where all of their variants are open to order. You can get cover A, you can get cover B, but it's not more difficult to get cover A than cover B. You just kind of pick what art you like. Uh, in the last month or so, they've started doing these variant covers where virgin type covers where there's not a lot of print on them and they focus on the art. And we've seen with like, you know, the Josh Middleton cover, very popular people are liking it right off the bat. DC will sometimes do tiered variants like the Batman number 50 comes out next week and there's a 1 in 10, a 1 in 25, a 1 in 50, and a 1 in 100 variant, which means if you buy 100 copies of 50s normal cover you can get one of the i think it's a jim lee pencil mm -hmm. sketch cover right looks and, cool by the way right very cool you understand that if you have to buy 100 of the regular cover to get one of there's less print run it's going to be worth inherently more marvel does a lot of the tiered variants where you have to buy one in 10 one in 25 one in 50 but another thing that marvel does is they do percentile variants and it's very difficult as a shop owner to try and figure out what i have to do for fantastic four number one fantastic four number one is coming out in a couple how months. many variants are there i think there are 44 there <laughs> might be more and i'm sure you're gonna have midtown and tfa and a few of the mm -hmm. other places that are doing their own special variants and 
yeah, we're probably going to see over 50 variants, and then they're going to do first, second, third, fourth, fifth print of it, because it's big. I mean, Fantastic Four coming back, it's a big thing, but they've got variants that I know all of the Art Germ variants and all of the Scotty Young variants, there are four different Scotty Young variants, four different Art Germ variants, and all of them are like 275% of what your Avengers number three order was. So what I have to do is I have to go back, figure out how many copies of Avengers number three I ordered. Where's the graphing calculator? I know. And it's like, (laughs) you have to bring this out and you're like, you know, bringing out your abacus and ticking these things. And it's like 275%. Okay. So I bought 13 of them. And all of a sudden I have to buy 46 of this one to be able to be eligible to buy this variant. It just makes it very, very difficult. Another thing is that it starts out really small. It's 100% of X, so you buy one comic, and then you can buy one more, and then you have to buy three more, and then you have to buy five more, and then eventually you're at the point where you need to buy 276. You buy all the comics. Right, yeah. and, and that's why a lot of times these comic shops start out able to get variants, and then they get fewer and fewer and fewer of them mm-hmm. because it's just more difficult to get variants. Oh, and they don't move them as quick. Especially when you're taking on that kind of inventory. Absolutely. I mean, there's no point in in getting 25 copies of a comic if you're only selling six of them. Because you're losing money Mm -hmm. on the other 19 copies. I want to touch on um, variant fatigue that customers are likely either beginning to face or fear that they may face eventually. As well as where this could lead down the road um, in the future as it pertains to maybe a potential bubble, something that we saw like in the 90s happen. But before we touch on that, I want to just throw out there something that's a little new to me. Hidden variants. Oh, my gosh. Secret variants. What the hell? What the hell is happening? Okay, so Tom and I were talking about variants doing a little bit of prep work for this, and I mentioned to him, because I know he's a huge Walking Dead fan, I'm like, hey, did you catch these pink signature variants? He's like, what are you talking about? And there have been a couple Walking Dead and a couple Oblivion song, looks like Kirkman likes to do these, Mm -hmm. a couple variants where they didn't tell anyone they were making a variant, but was it issue 171, 173? Yeah, it was the princess issue okay first appearance of princess first first appearance of princess they had a regular cover with her on the front three dollar comic and then they had another cover that was like a green cover with walkers around rick three dollar three dollar comic and then there was a one that was signed in the front in pink and it wasn't even actually signed it was just a yes photocopied right it's a variant cover but there were like three or four extra pages of the story in the book anyway and it's like a 65 dollar comic and no one knew that it was coming out until after image had released it and it hit the shelves and all of a sudden people were looking at the comics and realized that they were different and there was something wrong with them and it was worth way more no one ordered it no one knew it it just kind of randomly shop owners probably just put it on the shelves and said yeah three dollar comics go Mm -hmm. none of us knew if we had accidentally gotten one because i don't think any of us were paying attention to the color of the signature on the comic so we have marvel who's going balls they're throwing everything they can at the wall to sell their variants Mm -hmm. just everything let's do you know a through z one through 25 variants you know what everything you can do um every marvel character let's just scotty young we need four copies from you we need you know just where's jrr let's just let's get this going absolutely um then you have dc who seems to be a little bit more reserved but they're in the variant game. You have DC to be in the game. DC is very much in the variant game, and they know when it needs to hit. Most of their comics have variants, and they went from three ninety nine to two ninety nine a comic, but they did the double variant cover, so you could kind of like get mm-hmm. more if you wanted them. But on special issues, Batman fifty four, the wedding, we're gonna get multiple sure. of. But that's an event. You kind of can expect it. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, hey. It's metal, the first we had issue. variant covers. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, metal, we had four or five different variant covers, and there was a Capullo variant, and there was a Jim Lee variant, and there was a, you know, uh, I don't know, Jock variant, and a JRJR variant, and whoever's working on it. But I mean, they just have different right. variants for all of them. But again, it was still relatively subdued. We're talking five, maybe six variants for some of them. It's not pulling a 50 different covers like Marvel mm-hmm. does. And then you have like Image, who's now getting into the hidden variant game. Let's just surprise the audience. It's actually kind of fun. I like, I kind of like that. Right. Kind of add some spice to this whole mix. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as the consumer goes, I think the variant fatigue, the concern is that this may, I guess, turn people off to buying comic books. As a shop owner, have you seen that? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. And... I don't necessarily think it's going to turn them off from buying comic books altogether, but um, 
inherently we all have this hunter gatherer thing in our brain we like making sets we like completing things sure. and people who are ocd are a little bit more than that but most of us we like a one through 15 run and some people want to go beyond just having the run and being able to finish the story and they want to get to the point of i want these five variants and these five variants and these five variants because they're completionists when you get to the point that you have 27 variants for a cover you're going to get people who aren't going to go well i'll only buy the three that i want they're going to go i don't want any of these yeah and i am already noticing people who they don't like the fact that marvel has their own catalog and marvel has to be a unique snowflake and dc just started with their own catalog i've got people now that are only picking up the main previews and not the marvel and dc because they don't want to have to look through extra catalogs they want to look through one and have it that way um i had a guy come in earlier today who straight up said i'm not picking up marvel this month for the new catalog i'm just going with dc because i can't do the number of variants i want to buy all of them and therefore i'm gonna buy none of them yeah. so i'm already seeing people who are telling me straight up it's like i don't care enough about playing this this variant game and while we are seeing prices going up on these variants and one in 50 variants being only worth money. some of them though not all of them though most and, of them aren't well and and you can even notice that as a smaller shop um it doesn't behoove me to spend the money to bring in 50 comics to get a one in 50 variant because i know if i go on ebay i can see that one in 50 variant selling for 25 dollars 30 dollars right off the bat and then I still have 42 more copies that aren't going into the boxes that I end up selling at cost or losing money on. Ooh. So as a shopkeeper, it doesn't make any sense for me to spend the extra money to get the variant unless I know someone's buying the variant. If I have someone who comes in and says, hey, I want this one in 100, and I'm going to help you get it by buying extra copies of the main variant. Yeah, so that's I, a different story. Absolutely. They have bird cages to line mm -hmm. whatever they're planning on doing with 35 <laughs> extra copies of, you know, Whatever. Absolutely. But th there is less of a necessity there for me to purchase it unless someone specifically comes in and says, I want to help you with that. Because it's not making me extra money. Mm -hmm. You know, when they had... Um, ASM 800 just had a ton of variants. Mm -hmm. Amazing Spider-Man 700 was one of those first comics that yeah. came out when I first opened as a shop. And I really considered buying more and more variants of it. And they had like a 1 in 100 and mm -hmm. a 1 in a 500. And they had some massive variants. And I started looking at what the pre-sale prices were on eBay. And even these comics that were pre-selling at $500, $600. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, long-term, can I sell that? Am I going to sit here with 250 extra copies of Amazing Spider-Man 700? That was a $7.99 book. Right. So even at my cost, I'm spending multiple thousands of dollars to bring in one variant that people care about. Mm -hmm. and, one, and which is it going to be the right one? Right. Yeah, it's still a gamble, mm -hmm. you know? So, unfortunately, well, eh, it depends on if you like variants or not, but the reality is is that I don't think variants are going to go away. Like, this is this is going to continue to happen. This is going to... They're going to keep trying to sell what they can. Mm -hmm. um, so, I guess then the ne next question is, what does this mean for the potential future? Um, a lot of people, I would imagine, are concerned about this type of bubble. Um, are we going to see variants maybe start to go down in price? Already, I think variants are going down in price. I mean, I had uh, someone commented on the last top 10 video what they think they're going to be hot books are, and mm -hmm. they mentioned Action Comics 1000. And, okay, the Jim Lee variant, mm -hmm. because you could only get that from him or at a few different places, a right. few different stores. But the main eight covers and the blank cover, they're not going to be worth anything no. because they printed them in the millions, and tons and tons of people bought all eight, nine, or ten variants, whichever ones they wanted to. And you and I really like the Mike Allred variant. Mike and Laura Allred, fantastic, love that 60s variant. But I don't see it appreciating a lot in value. And um, even when we did the top ten video, it's kind of like you see a one in 25, a one in 50. Okay, low print run, you have a little bit of this inherent collectability mm -hmm. there. But it still doesn't mean long-term collectability. You're dealing with a speculative market. Right. And as Warren Buffett says, speculating is very different than playing the long-term game. If you're speculating, the only thing you need 
is the person behind you to spend more money than you spent, and then you've made money on it. Most of us are not collectors in a speculative form. If I was buying a copy of Teen Titans Special Number 1 that came out yesterday, mm -hmm. first appearance of Lobo's daughter, Crush, it's going for $15 on eBay already. Yeah, next day. Boom. Right. So you buy it, you sell it, you flip it. You don't read the comic. You don't care about what's in it. You don't care about Crush or Lobo's daughter. You're just doing it to make the money on it. And when we see a lot of these variants spike in price like that, when people are less willing to spend money on that, because the market is flooded with 44, 57, 85 variants, however many variants mm -hmm. it is, you're going to notice fewer and fewer people buying them. And hopefully we're going to see Marvel and DC releasing fewer of them. Variants used to be special, you know. Variants used to be regional. Variants used to be things that didn't happen very often. And now it's just kind of assumed how many variants of the new Cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah, how many do I need it? Right. I need, what if I get lucky? What I like right now is that I'm seeing that some of these variants that are getting hot, it's like they deserve it. There's so many variants out there. But the variants that are hot, it's like you're giving that cover a second look because it's, it's awesome. It's not hot because it's worth money it's, and because it was low print. It's hot because it's a hot book. Right. Like, look at it. Just look at it. All of the new <laughs> Flash variants for the ABDC are just – It's uh, friend, Matina, I think, mm -hmm. is the – oh, my God. It's gorgeous. Every single one that comes out is just absolute fire, and I don't care if they're $3 cover price, and I don't care if they're going to be worth $3 in 10 years because that's the type of variant that if I want as a variant collector, I'm going to put on my wall next to my Flash poster and go, look at how awesome these mm -hmm. Flash variants are. So I'm not as concerned about the long-term collectability or long-term appreciation of value. My appreciation is in the fact that the art's killer, mm -hmm. and I like it from that. And if you buy what you like, it doesn't matter what it's going to be worth monetarily years from now. If you're buying comics now, hoping you can make money in five or ten years, you're collecting for the wrong reason. You yeah. know, if the market explodes and the bubble goes away, you need to be able to still enjoy these comic books. I get collections all the time from people who bought the comics, read the comics, and then just kind of moved on. And it's a... It's, on our end, and this happens to me, and I know this has happened to you, you probably see it more than I do, when collections come in and the, co and the order that the comics are in are the way that they were put on the shelf in the first place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? I, I, like it wasn't read. Like they sometimes just... you get these meticulously sorted collections and you've got Amazing Spider-Man and you've got Action Comics, you've got Adventure Comics, and they're clustered and they're yeah. in order. And you get the meticulous people sure. who put them in order. But more often than not, especially with the newer comic collections, someone comes in the long box of comics and it's seven different titles, seven different titles, seven different titles, seven different titles. January, February, March, April, And May. they literally went into the comic book store. They picked up their comics, put it in the short box, and never read them. Read your comics. Read your comics. If you're not reading them, cancel your box wherever you're at. It doesn't do me any good for people to continue to buy comics from me because you begrudgingly pick up your comics every single month. We want you to love them. We want you to enjoy them. And I like having comic box customers, but truthfully, I'd rather have people who enjoy what they're doing. Don't just collect because you think it's going to be worth money. Do it because you love it. Do it because you enjoy it. There's a lot of fun comics out there. And if you don't like what you're reading, Hit us up. We'll give some great recommendations. Yeah. And there'll probably be more videos on recommendations. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so we really do appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, we're on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes if you prefer to consume our content via audio.